previous lesson, we've talked about the Autotask Documentation Manager. So as I've said before, the Documentation Manager is for very customer-specific documentation. And we have the Autotask Knowledge Base for general documentation. So let's take a look at the Knowledge Base in this video or in this lesson. So to go to the Knowledge Base um, or go to the Admin uh, for the Knowledge Base, let's go to the Admin Center, which we can do by going to the menu in the top left corner and clicking on Admin right here. And go to the third tab, which is called Automation right here at the top. And as you can see, we have the Knowledge Base and Documentation tab right here. So we can click on the plus sign to expand it. And as you can see, we have Knowledge Base and Documentation right here. And in this lesson, we will talk about the Knowledge Base. So we will click on this. And as you can see, it's the front page is generally the same as for the Documentation Manager. So you can see um, the different kind of articles and the visibility of the articles. For example, if something is internal only or if it's internal and published to a specific company or published to a specific classification or something like that. And as you can see at the bottom right here in this table, you can also see the approval status. So as you can see, we have um, 48 published articles right now and there are no new drafts or pending approvals. So also for the knowledge base, what we can do is we can set different kind of categories as we did um, for the documentation manager. So let's go to the second tab right here and click on categories. And as you can see, we have different kind of categories as our best practice for the knowledge base. So let's just take a look at these categories. As you can see, we've split it up in two different kind of um, sections. So under all articles, we have a section called Knowledge Base and we have a section called Standard Operating Procedures. So let's first take a look at the Knowledge Base right here and how we've built it up uh, through each category. So in the Knowledge Base, we have different kind of categories matching to different kind of services or products. So we have backup and disaster recovery. We have business management and PSA, DOSO RMM and support tools. And as you can see, we have just different kind of categories for each kind of service or tooling or stuff like that. And uh, it will go all the way down to security, server and storage um, and workstation and clients. You might want to pause this video so you can just take a look at these categories and for example, fill them in in your own Autotask account. And yeah, the second one after the knowledge base were the standard operating procedures. So let's take a look at that. Within the standard operating procedures, we have different kind of categories for, yeah, well, different kind of departments within the company. So we have a category for finance and administration, procurement and delivery, project, sales and marketing and support. And within these categories, you can make certain kind of subcategories. So for example, within support, we have user manual templates, but you can just make different kind of categories within the categories to make everything really easily searchable. And yeah, you can just find all different kind of articles really fast because you can just search for the right kind of category or, and subcategory. Okay, so after you set up the categories, let's take a look at the knowledge base itself. We can just click on search knowledge base right here at the top and we will go to the knowledge base. So as you can see, this is the search page for the knowledge base. What I've done is I've clicked on this star right here to add it to my favorites. So when I go to my bookmarks, I can just very easily go to the knowledge base search or to the documentation manager right here, which I've also bookmarked to just go to it really easily. As you can see, we have two kind of tabs on this page with the search and the advanced search. Within the search, you get a few basic uh, categories. And from within the advanced search, we can just filter a little bit more in depth. Let's just take a look at the search page or the basic search page. As you can see, we have certain kind of filters right here. And as you can see, we have the article category filter right here. And we, we have it, or the standard is all articles, but we can just click on it and we can filter on 
different kind of, of articles or different kind of categories depending on which category we need. And if not everything is visible, we can just click on the selector icon right here and it'll open it up or open a select article category page right up. We can just search a little bit more in depth. So let's just close this page right now and search for example, knowledge base. And as you can see, we have the filters right here. So we can, or the buttons right here to clear the filter values or to choose filters. So if we click on choose filters right here, we can add different kind of filters to our selected filters view. So you can just search for um, uh, a little bit more in depth. But I will just click on search right now. And as you can see, we have different kinds of articles or there are different kinds of articles found right here. And we can just click on an article to open it. So let's just open the top article. And as you can see, it's really similar to the documentation manager. Which is very handy for the engineers because they're set up so similarly. Everything is really easily visible. And as you can see, yeah, we have an article right here. We have text selected, so it'll associate this solution with these tags. We have a little bit of content right here, a checklist underneath, and we have related with uh, a tickle, ticket, an article and a document. And as you can see, we have the activity view right here at the bottom. And we can see that first a draft was approved and published, and then a new draft was also approved and published. So we have the article version history at the top under tools right here. We can also copy it or we can just view the history or convert it to a document, which are different kinds of options right here. So when we want to see the history, we can just click on article history right here. And we can see what the changes were and by whom they were made and what it was changed from. So it'll give you a little bit of detail about the history. And besides the history, we also have the versions right here at the top. So we can click on this button. And as you can see, there are two different kinds of versions right here. And yeah, we can just see what the changes were and what it was changed from. And if we really want to, we can just put back a previous version. By just clicking on the version date, we can get a little bit more detail about the version. And if we want to roll back to this version, you have the button at the top right here, roll back to this version, and it'll automatically roll back to this version. And if you're not sure, or you have a lot of multiple versions, you can just use these arrows right here at the top to scroll to a different version you might want to roll back to. But as you can see, this is the current version. So there's no rollback button right here at the top. Okay, so let's just go back to the article. And as you can see, we have also a different kind of checklist items in this article, and we can just as easily as with the documentation manager, add them to a ticket or add them and relate the ticket itself. But I yeah, mentioned previously, it's easier to just go or to just associate it from a ticket kind of view instead of from this view, because when you're busy with a ticket, you might want to just search for the solution and uh, add it from within the ticket as we've done in the previous lesson. So another cool thing about the knowledge base is that you can associate knowledge base articles with uh, checklist items. So let's just make a checklist. Um, for example, you can, as you know, the checklist, you can make them with from within the admin center, but let's just create one real quick right here in a new ticket. We can just add a few items. And when I want to associate the knowledge base article with the checklist, what I can do is I can go to the menu within the checklist item right here and click on associate knowledge base article. And it'll just open up the knowledge base and we can filter for different kinds of articles right here. And I can just select the article I might want to associate, or if I'm not sure, we can just search for the title or search for the article ID or something like that. 
and we can just search for the right kind of article. If I'm not sure, I can just click on the article title and it'll open up the article so I can make sure this is the correct article and it is. So let's just go back to the previous page and select this article. And as you can see, there is a book sign right here. And it's this sign, well, indicative for yeah, that a knowledge base article has been associated with this uh, checklist item. So when I click on this book sign right here, the knowledge base article will open and I can just um, view it from the ticket. So that's from the ticket view. Let's go back to the admin center by going to the menu button right here and clicking on admin right here. And we can go to the application wide chart features and expand on it. And let's go to the automation tab right here and go to checklists and templates and expand on it. And we can go to checklists right here and click on it. And as you can see, we have all our checklists right here. So if I want to associate a knowledge based article to a checklist, I can just edit the checklist by going to the menu and clicking on edit right here. And as you can see, we have the checklist right here and we can just go to the correct uh, checklist item and click on associate knowledge base article like we did um, previously from within the ticket. And we can just search for the knowledge base article we want to associate and associate it like we did previously. So yeah, that's just how you work with the knowledge base and with the checklists.